Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome to my second encounter with the brand Spinnaker. It seems like only a couple of weeks ago that I was reviewing their Spinnaker Croft model. Perhaps because it was only a couple of weeks ago that I reviewed the Spinnaker Croft model. This one had rather a lot going on, Fume dials, small seconds, little cyclops and a big chunky case. Today it's the turn of their brand new hull model. This one yet to be released. Spinnaker seem to follow a particular sales pattern when they're releasing new watches onto the market. They put the watch on their website, they allow you to register your interest, you send them your email address. When the watch is released, this one next week on the 18th of May, they'll send you an email. If you're still interested, you then complete the transaction. At that point, however, you have the option of adding a discount code when you purchase. You will find a discount code JOMWA30 for 30% off the hull or pretty much anything else on the Spinnaker website in the description of this video. That takes the hull down to only $175. Quite appealing for a retro style watch with more than a whiff of Panerai about it. Let's flip the camera and get a closer look. So Spinnaker number two then, and I must admit, I quite like both of them. Again, it comes with this reviewer box. This isn't the standard packaging, so I can't really comment about what you're gonna get if you do sign up for one of these and pick one up on the 18th of May, but I can comment about the watch, and it's a lovely looking, as I said in the intro, more than a whiff of Panerai about it, and that is no bad thing. Doesn't have the vintage lugs, kind of like a, a Radio Mir 1940, one of these style ones I'm popping up on the screen there. But for $175 rather than for seven and a half grand, so not bad in my book. Usual format today then, dimensions and specifications. We've got a loom shot, wrist shot, movement accuracy report, and actually only three fairly minor moans and niggles, which is not like me at all, is it? So 42 millimeters in diameter, but really that's the biggest of the dimensions today. Uh, it wears and feels like a much smaller watch than that 42 mil diameter initially suggests, thanks in no small part to this cushion case. 22 millimeter on the lug width, we've got just under 50 mil thick, 14.75, but only 47 and a half lug to lug. Now that is only a millimeter more than the legendary SKX 007009 brothers. Those watches are known to suit guys with smaller wrists because of that shorter lug to lug. This one also weighing in at only 92 grams on the supplied leather strap. So as mentioned, it really does feel like a smaller watch on the wrist, a trick it shares with the Panerai's. Four different colorways are available, but I think I got the best one. Really enjoying this DLC coating here, especially when combined with this fawn leather strap, nice kind of pale leather strap. Now, the strap came with a tag saying that it was waterproof leather, suggesting that it will absorb considerably less water than a normal leather strap. You know, I have my doubts about leather straps on a dive watch to begin with. Uh, you know, that's up to you whether you pop this one perhaps on a rubber strap or something for the weekend, or you just take your chances with this leather one. Certainly there's an expectation then that you'll be getting this one wet and the strap is, is designed to, to help you with that. We've got a screw down crown here, 100 meters of water resistance, 316L stainless steel DLC coating as mentioned as well. Zoomed in there on a pretty attractive dial, all things considered. Spinnaker logo applied just underneath the 12, and we've got automatic 330 feet, 100 meters printed above the six there. So it's a Fume dial, there's a color grade from the center to the edges, paler in the middle, nice kind of brown tones uh, heading over towards the edges where the minute track is. And it's a sandwich dial. Those hour batons, the indices there, and the circular hour markers all cut into the upper dial pumped full of Super Luminova. I will pop up a loom shot, really good loom on the indices. Actually a little better loom than is on the hands, but there's still plenty of it on the hour, the minute, and a nice little lollipop on the end of the second hand as well. So the dial, definitely one of the nicest features 
of the Spinnaker hull. Now, it's a domed crystal today, little step on the edge there as well, but it's only a mineral crystal. So perhaps not quite as good as the Sapphire that was fitted to the Croft I reviewed, but for the price, 175, they're certainly not the only manufacturer that gives you a piece of mineral rather than a piece of Sapphire. Perhaps you can also make out there a nice little bit of brushing on the handset, very attractive handset suiting the, the vintage aesthetic as well today. Now over to the case back and we've got a screw down case back helping with that 100 meters water resistant, advertising the automatic movement, the all stainless steel construction and the specific model number. And perhaps you can make out the familiar sight of the Seiko NH35, a definite step forward from the Croft which used a small seconds version of the Miyota 8000 series. I will pop up an accuracy report, this one running in the winders for just over a week, coming in at plus three. Definitely one of the advantages of using this venerable Seiko movement, they really are everywhere, but I've never had a duffer yet. They usually come in plus or minus 10, this one no different. 42 hour power reserve, hacks and hand winds as well. A real step up in my opinion anyway, from the Miyota 8000 and its derivatives. Regardless of exactly how waterproof this strap is, it's a good one. Spinnaker come from the same company that manufactured James McCabe watches, and I really enjoy the straps on the McCabe's. These ones certainly look and feel as if they're coming from the same factory that made those. We've got a nice DLC coated buckle there as well, again with the Spinnaker logo etched in it and Spinnaker logo on the underside. Nice bit of vintage stitching there. And there is the watch on my seven inch wrist. Cushion cases always make the watch feel a lot smaller than that initial diameter dimension suggests. So it's a 42 that certainly doesn't feel bulky in any way. As mentioned, I definitely got sent the best of the color schemes, really enjoying the gold tone hands, that brown fume dial, the, the dark DLC coating and that lovely fawn strap. Certainly looks a lot more expensive, I think, than the $175 that they're gonna be charging for this one when they release it next week. Moons and niggles then, well, only three, and I've intimated what two of them are. Mineral crystal, I'd much rather have sapphire crystal, I'm a bit of a klutz, so I do tend to shy away a little bit from stuff with mineral crystal. But again, I don't think you've been ripped off given the, the quality, the overall feel of quality given the rest of the watch and the $175 price tag. I'm looking at you, Seiko and Orient, you're both doing exactly the same thing. Leather strap on a diver, I'll leave that one up to you, but as mentioned, the strap is a good one. My only other gripe is with that case back. What on earth is going on there? It's the Spinnaker logo, but why put a see-through case back on a watch when you're then gonna obscure it with text? Just cover the thing up. I don't think the Seiko NH35 is all that crash hot looking anyway. Give us a solid case back, perhaps that would even have led to a slightly improved water resistance. I just don't quite get what's going on there, do you? Overall then, I'm very pleased with this Spinnaker hull. I really do enjoy the vintage aesthetic. Nice DLC coating on this one. Love the Fume dial, those hands, and that sandwich effect. Plenty of loom provided. Really looking forward to Spinnaker's future output. So there you have it, perhaps a case of three steps forward and one step back, for me anyway at least, with the Spinnaker hull. I really like the watch, I think I definitely got the best model, love the colour scheme of this one with the DLC coating and that pale fawn strap. I also think their move away from the Miyota 8000 series to the Seiko NH35 is a good one. I just wish they'd put a piece of domed sapphire rather than domed mineral on top of the dial. But at $175, I can't moan too much. Don't forget the description code if you're interested. John with 30. See you in the next vid.